We begin in Niger, where reports are emerging that the military regime will prosecute the ousted president, Mohamed Barzoum, for high treason. That's according to a statement released by the military council. Al Jazeera's Ahmed Idris has more from Katsina in northern Nigeria. The statement uh, is an indication that the military isn't about to let President Mohamed Bazoum go. Uh, you know, the international community, especially ECOWAS and the African Union, their first demand was he be released, and along with members of his family and other cabinet members who have been arrested earlier in the days of the coup. So the statement put out the, in the evening, late evening on Sunday, by the military uh, shows that they want to put him on trial. And with the charges, uh, Colonel Amadou Abdurrahman put out uh, on television, this could be uh, serious charges that could, of course, result in uh, very, very serious repercussions for President Mohamed Bazoum. It's certainly going to uh, increase tension between uh, the government in Niger, the military government in Niger, and uh, the international community, especially the economic community of West African states. Some analysts could see this as possibly uh, as an attempt by the military to further strengthen their hands in future negotiations. But again, I remember there have been some rumors about the possibility of uh, taking serious uh, steps against Mohamed Bazoum earlier uh, in the days of the coup. So for that, uh, it's hard to say exactly what they're playing at, but many people will read meaning into it that they want to strengthen their hands and possibly not let go Bazoum off easily, uh, despite international pressure to, uh, for, for them to do that. Well, earlier, the head of a group of Nigerian scholars told Al Jazeera that the coup leader in Niger has agreed to direct talks with regional bloc ECOWAS. The group of religious leaders from Nigeria met the military rulers in the capital, Niamey. The delegation has called for dialogue to end the crisis. Their visit is part of efforts to ease tensions after the military took power. Well, my colleague Sami Zaydan spoke to Abdullah He Balalao, the leader of the delegation. He said those talks could happen in the coming days. We want to create an avenue whereby the leaders of, uh, you know, Junta Coup in Niger will have a dialogue with the ECOWAS leaders to understand each other so that peace will continue to reign in our region. You mentioned there he has accepted. Are you, are you saying that Abdurrahman Chiane, the leader of the coup, has accepted to have direct talks with ECOWAS? Yes, he has accepted to have for you direct, you know, discussions with the leaders of, you know, ECOWAS. So we want them to select a place where to meet. If they intend to meet there in Niger or in Nigeria or where else they think is better for them, then we want a lasting solution where peace will continue to reign in our region. That, that was why we were there. When do you expect these talks to take place between Abdurrahman Chiane and ECOWAS leaders? Yes, as soon as we meet with the president of Nigeria, you know, first we met him and we want that intervention to take place. We want him to grant us audience and he granted audience for us. And he said he agreed if we can go ahead to intervene. So we commend his effort. And uh, as soon as we, we, we are back, now we are back in Abuja, maybe tomorrow, inshallah, we will meet him. So I don't want to preempt what we discuss with the leader of uh, Niger until we have audience with the president of Nigeria. And later, inshallah, I know they will fix time to discuss. Well, there is mounting concern in West African states that military intervention against coup leaders in Niger would worsen an already difficult humanitarian and security situation in the Sahel. It's a region that struggles against armed groups like ISIL and al-Qaeda, with thousands killed and millions forced to flee their homes. Al Jazeera's Charles Stratford reports from Zebila, near the Ghana-Burkina Faso border. These women and children are a tiny fraction of the more than five million people the UN says have fled attacks by armed groups across the Sahel region of West Africa in recent years. They shelter in this refugee reception camp near the border between Ghana and Burkina Faso. Lakme Seya escaped from their village in Burkina Faso with her seven children. She describes that day in May. 
We were on our farm when the shooting started. We tried to run to the village, but the shooting was too intense. As we ran, we saw many dead people. We were very afraid. Lakme says her children haven't seen their dad since the day they fled. We were with my husband when they started shooting, but we lost him as we ran. I don't know where he is now. We hope he is still alive, so he can come here to the camp. The Ghanaian Refugee Agency plans to build a camp for 6,000 more refugees close by, but there is growing concern time may be running out. After the West African regional bloc ECOWAS threatened Niger's coup leaders with military intervention as a last resort if they don't return to civilian rule. Neighboring Burkina Faso along with Mali have said that any military intervention in Niger by ECOWAS would be a declaration of war on those countries too. So there are increasing fears that in a situation like that, armed groups like ISIL and Al-Qaeda could take advantage of the situation, which could potentially mean thousands more refugees flooding into countries like Ghana and others right the way across the Sahel region. Ghanaian authorities say they are preparing for the worst. We're watching the space and watching to see what's going to happen. We, we, we hope that it doesn't get worse or as bad as um, some people predict. Uh, but we are, we are we're on the lookout and we're talking to all the necessary, uh, the necessary people and the necessary agencies. Armed groups have killed thousands of people across the Sahel region in recent years. ECOWAS says the security situation in Burkina Faso and Mali deteriorated in the first six months of this year, and that was before the coup in Niger. Neighboring countries already struggling to cope, are braced for potentially thousands more people fleeing across borders for their lives. Charles Stratford, Al Jazeera, near the Ghana-Burkina Faso border.